वेलकम टू एम बी एस कॉन्फर ऑनलाइन फिनिश लाइन कोर्स फॉर द फर्स्ट एम बी एस स्टूडेंट्स पेपर वन टूडे माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर सत्य विश्वश्री कंसलटेंट ऑर्थोरॉन्टिस्ट टीम एम बी एस कॉन्फर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट प्री नेटल एंड पोस्ट नेटल ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द मैंडबल दिस इज द कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ द प्रीवियस वीडियोज विच इज विच आर डिस्क्राइबिंग द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द फेस एंड ऑल्सो द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द मैगजिला एंड एज अ जनरल टॉपिक द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द मैंडबल एंड मैगजिला आर डिस्कस्ड इन अदर वीडियोज so i am now in this video i am only including the extra points which we have to write as in the orthodontic perspective and uh, i am just giving a outline uh, which contents are to be included in your answer for the prenatal and postnatal development of the mandible so you have to include the anatomy of the mandible and prenatal development of the mandible mandible at the time of birth postnatal development of the mandible mandibular rotations which are described in the previous video so you have to write from the growth rotations you the mandibular rotations which are uh, discussed earlier and the development of the mandible in relation to various theories of the growth and uh, the age changes in the mandible how they appear prenatally and uh, in the infant age at the time of birth and in the adult and what are the various muscle attachments which are present and the clinical implications of the growth and development and what are the various developmental anomalies if you study these developmental anomalies as a part of this uh, prenatal and postnatal development of the mandible itself you can answer the question which will come as an essay question or a 75 marks question that is various craniofacial deformities so the craniofacial anomalies of the maxilla and mandible should be included in the craniofacial deformities so i am just running through the prenatal development of the mandible it develops from the mandibular arch and it is explained in the previous video and uh, the importance of the meckel's cartilage should be definitely uh, studied and this uh, this meckel's cartilage alone can come as a seven marks question so brief description of the meckel's cartilage is uh, necessary and uh, what are what is the time at which the meckel's cartilage appears that is a uh, sixth week of intrauterine life and uh, the uh, center of the ossification of the meckel's cart uh, center of the ossification of the mandibular arch lies at the uh, beside the uh, mental foramen and most of the meckel's cartilage will disappear only a remnant of the metal meckel's cartilage remains so you have to write about the uh, fate of the meckel's cartilage and uh, what are the extremities developed that is incus and malleus are also developed in the meckel's cartilage so it's alone can come as a seven marks question then you have to include all the parts of meckel's cartilage and uh, what it forms the mandible mandible a major part is formed by the meckel's cartilage only okay next what are the other secondary cartilages involved in the mandibular development so meckel's cartilage will form the ramus of the uh, ramus and the body of the mandible whereas the other parts like condyle and coronoid are exceptionally secondary cartilages and the symphysial cartilage present in the midline so you have to uh, explain how they are formed so this is the condylar process which is formed at the 10th week so you have to explain the uh, uh, position of the condyle which is present away from the body of the mandible that is this is formed by the meckel's cartilage and this is the secondary cartilage which is formed and gradually attaches to the mandible this is the coronoid process and this is the condylar process so coronoid process will appear as 10th to 5th week and the mental region symphysal these are all the three are secondary cartilages so with this the prenatal development of the mandible will complete and uh, at the time of the birth how the mandible appears so it is very short and you have to describe the mandible at the time of the birth and later postnatally that is after the birth it expands through v principle which is explained in the previous videos and uh, the another uh, seven marks question may ask and you have to include in this question is the enlos counterpart principle that is for every part there is an opposite uh, counterpart which is growing at the same pace so maxilla and mandible are counterparts to each other and uh, the middle cranial fossa is a counterpart to the nasomaxillary fossa so like this the counterpart principle uh, growth equivalent concept runs and you have to read this and this is also a seven marks question and uh, mandibular remodeling takes place by resorption and bone deposition deposit uh, these are uh, in this picture by red arrows and the blue arrows they are measured and you have to uh, individually each part should be described how the resorption takes place at particular part okay so the growth at the condyle how it takes place and uh, what are the parts of the condyle articular cartilage and the growth cartilage the remaining of the growth cartilage acts as a secondary cartilage for the rest of the period and uh, this because of this region the functional appliance treatment plan can be done in the orthodontics so that implication you have to include in the growth condyle next is the condylar neck 
uh, and this is also a specific part rather than the other uh, other parts you have to explain how the condylar net also include get includes into the uh, ramus of the body and how it gets into a shape in the form of a neck okay and next comes your sigmoid notch coronoid process and growth at the ramus how it happens and the angle of the mandible and uh, uh, angle of the mandible you have to write both the outer surface and the lingual surfaces and the lingual tuberosity and how the antigonial notch is formed okay because of the muscle pull the antigonial notch is formed in the case of mandibular uh, body of the mandible next comes your late mandibular growth so uh, sometimes the postnatal growth of the, the uh, growth and development of the mandible alone is asked so then after birth how the changes in if every part of the mandible uh, is explained and later you have to include certain articles regarding the late mandibular growth also what does late mandibular growth mean uh, uh, especially when compared to maxilla as the cephalocaudal gradient mandible grows uh, at a puberty age than maxilla maxillary growth restricts first and mandibular growth completes next so uh, the uh, one of the three events may occur and majority of the uh, articles uh, reported that the crowding is mainly because of the late mandibular growth and this point you have to include and these are the three events which are present and these two are the more important events the upper incisors may play forward and uh, opening of the spaces of the spaces between the maxillary teeth and lower incisors may distally displace in coming to the remodeling of the chin uh, this one also the chin will also develop only after the puberty age and that uh, and uh, the bone deposition takes place how it takes place everything bone remodeling of the chin should be explained and next is the alveolar process as the teeth emerges the alveolar process also remodeling takes place and this is the just a uh, table which is explaining each and uh, uh, every surface where the bone deposition and bone resorption takes place resulting in which dimension that is the transverse dimension or the anterior posterior or the vertical dimension so this table should be included in your answer in the case of postnatal growth of the mandible next this is the differential growth so at 8 weeks how the growth takes place mandible is greater than maxilla but at the 13, 13 to 20 weeks maxilla is greater than mandible at the time of birth mandible tends to be retrognathic and early postnatal life the orthognathic mandible will be present so next comes your rotation of the mandible during the growth these are already discussed in a growth rotations video so you can go through and you have to include in the case of 20 marks question you have to include the rotations of mandible next these are the eight changes in the mandible in infants what is the position of your mental foramen Man mandibular canal and angle of the mandible here the mandibular canal is considered as the most stable point so you have to mention how it changes from infant to the adults and in the old age how the changes of the mandible are present next is the timing of the growth in the width length and the height different dimensions of the growth of the mandible should be answered here and uh, these are the various changes in girls and boys depending upon the uh, gender differences also there are changes in your mandible uh, timing and at a last uh, concept you have to include the muscle attachments totally 13 muscles are present so you have to write out all the muscle attachments of on the lateral surface and also on the medial surfaces of the mandible finally the clinical implication of growth and development here functionally how we can use the growth and development of the growth and development of the mandible in, a, in your uh, orthodontic therapy so the functional appliances like uh, activator bionator chin cup and face mask can be used and uh, these are the um, anomalies of the uh, development so these anomalies these syndromes you can include in your answer of craniofacial deformities okay this is a brief description of your uh, uh, growth and development of the mandible and uh, depending upon this you can develop your answer uh, con concerning to a particular number of marks uh, 20 marks or 75 uh, 20 marks or 7 marks question uh, and uh, this cannot be asked as a uh, long answer uh, this is only a 7 marks question or 20 marks question okay thank you